Welcome to Prayer Time with Tokony. It is truly a blessing to be on with you um, every Tuesday at 12 p.m. noon on Facebook and YouTube and every Sunday at 3 p.m. on um Winning in Prayer TV on the Roku channel, Winning in, T in Prayer TV. Um, feel free to go ahead if you would. Just um, share the broadcast with someone. Let them know that Prayer Time with Tokeny has started. Amen. And they don't want to miss what Father is desiring to say uh, today. As always, it's a privilege, it's an honor to have you guys join me and support what Father is doing um, here through TCB Ministries. If you'd like to find out more about um, who I am, what I do for booking information, that type of stuff, uh, feel free to go to tcbministries.org. Once again, that is TCB Ministries. Dot org. Well, yes, and of course, there is uh, a word from the Lord today. We began uh, talking about um, exposing uh, Jezebel or the attack of Jezebel. Um, I shared on the last broadcast how it attacks uh, the prophetic voice. Um, it protects the, the prophet. It uh, attacks the, the anointing or the prophetic anointing, anointing, and it also um, uh, attacks uh, the prophetic voice through leadership. So pastors, leaders, whomever is serving as a portal of the voice of God in the earth realm, we broke down. So at some point we all fit in here. Uh, we all have a prophetic voice. We all have a prophetic ability. Amen. So um, we talked about that. We began to talk about um, uh, one of the victims of Jezebel, which it, uh, we began to talk about Elijah. Um, and we, I wanted to take this time to go uh, deeper into um, exposing the operation or how Jezebel uh, attacked Eli Elijah. OK, so I wanted to share that as well um, and kind of give you an insight as to, you know, because a lot of times we deal with things, we go through seasons um, and we don't quite know what name to put on it. We don't know what fully um, to come against. Amen. And I believe that ignorance is one of those things that the enemy is using against the body of Christ as never before. Amen. Because we don't don't have to fight for our victory. We are already victorious. Amen. God has already deemed us victorious. He's already um, 
given us the victory through the redemptive work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we already have the victory, but I don't know about you. I want to know what I am dealing with. So I'm going to um, share uh, through here. I'm sure we won't get uh, through the entire teaching. It is a lengthy teaching, um, but it will leave you informed. It will give you a deeper, greater understanding of um, an attack from the spirit of Jezebel or the manifestations of an attack from the spirit of Jezebel. Now, um, today we're going to be talking about Elijah um, over in Daniel uh, 11th chapter and the 32nd verse, part B, it says, and they that know their Lord or their God shall be strong and do exploits, okay? So uh, just to kind of give you a description of Elijah so that you'll understand, he was not just a prophet. He was not just any man, amen? But he was someone that was used greatly by God that prior to um, even uh, the experience on Mark Carmel, he was already flowing prophetically and being used prophetically. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, he was one. Elijah was one that did exploits in the earth realm. Amen. Uh, number one, he experienced the supernatural provision of God. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings the 17th chapter and we're going to start at the first verse. Amen. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the Brook Cherev, that is before Jordan. And it, can, it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Here are some things that stood out with me, Elijah. He had the ability to not only hear from God for other people, OK, because he released the word to Ahab. OK, but he also had the inner ability or the ability to hear from God for himself. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love it because he obeyed. He got up. And when God spoke, he moved. He said, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherif, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and fish in the morning, and bread and fish in the evening, and he drank drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So he obeyed. And as a result of his ability to obey, he experienced the supernatural provision of God. Amen. So he operated, he did exploits. He knew the power of God. He knew God's supernatural provision. Amen. And we're going to see throughout his life how he operated in exploits. So he was not just any man. He was not just any prophet. Amen. Remember, this is, uh, uh, he, he walked closely with Elisha. He received a double portion of the anointing that was on his life. You know, Elijah was used greatly in the land. Hallelujah. So let's read a little bit further. Here we're going to see how uh, we're going to continue with how he um, 
uh, was used to not only receive supernatural provision, but he was used to provide supernatural provision through the word of God. So it says, and it came and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman um, there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, she, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not cake um, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in, dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son. So we understand this passage. Elijah approaches the widow woman uh, who is uh, in a very destitute season of her life. She's fine, you know, pretty much she's made up in her heart and in her mind that she was about to prepare the last meal or the last supper for she and her son. Yet the prophet or the presence of God through the prophet, amen, showed up, amen, in order to bring shift and change to this widow woman's life. He put a demand on her faith. He caused her to shift out of her level or place of expectation of dying or giving up or just walking away. In her mind, I'm sure she had made up, you know, and um, come to the conclusion, this is the last day of my life. Amen. However, we see through here, God had a greater and a deeper plan um, for the widow woman. So he was used to provide supernatural provision. And I'm going to get down here and I'm going to begin to show you in the word. Amen. It says, um, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel and the meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruel of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Here we find an obedient woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Her obedience is what opened the door for supernatural provision in her life through the prophet. Amen. And it says, and, um, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Now look here, not only did she and her son eat many days, but as a result of Elijah's obedience, he was able to be a partaker as well of the supernatural provision. So this is an, another, uh, another example of him experiencing the supernatural provision of God. Now we see in scripture that because of her obedience, that he was, um, God allowed him to use his voice or speak to uh, the situation that she was in and bring supernatural provision, not only in the life of the woman, but her son and Elijah as well. Once again, Elijah wasn't just any man. He was a prophet. He had the ability to hear the voice of God. He was used as the voice of God in the Old Testament because 
because in Old Testament, many of the people were not able to hear from God specifically for themselves. There were specific people that had the ability, and it was, it was the prophets that had the ability to hear God for themselves. So he was a prophet, a man that was used of God uh, to bring supernatural provision. Next, he raised the widow's son from the dead. It says, and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath in him. And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee? O thou man of God, art there come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son. And he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the, son, the soul of the child <clears throat> came into him again and he was revived. Somebody say revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, see, thou son liveth. Hallelujah. And Elijah said, see thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, now by this, I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Uh-huh. The word of of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Now, remember, I explained last week how it is the word of truth that has caught that caused the issue uh, with Jezebel in Elijah's life. Elijah was clothed or mantled with the word of truth. Hallelujah. If you are an end time voice of God that has made up in your mind that you are going to speak and decree and declare and release truth, I need to expose this spirit to you so that you will get a greater footing or a greater understanding of the why. Amen. Hallelujah. So he even exposed truth or he walked in truth through manifesting miracle, okay, or an or exploits in the earth realm. And the woman of God, because of as a result of him raising her son, had to just come on out and say, it. I know for sure now that you are a man of God and you carry the word of truth. Keep that word in mind. Truth. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the truth that Jezebel comes after. It's the truth that Jezebel has a problem with in the life of the prophetic voice, the prophet, that person that has yielded themselves to the anointing or the prophetic anointing, or uh, your leader or the leadership in a church that serves as the prophetic voice. Amen. It is the truth that causes the issues and the problems. But beloved, I don't know about you. I would rather be attacked for truth than find myself in hell for not operating in or sharing the word of of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. See why now it's so very important that we release truth, that we decree truth, that we declare truth, because it is through the word of truth that the people are convinced. Amen. Hallelujah. Through the word of God, through the word of truth that springs forward out of the heart and the mouth of God. 
God, we also understand that Elijah challenged the 450 prophets of Baal. He challenged the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, which ate at Jezebel's table. Amen. There were the 450 prophets of Baal. There were the 400 prophets of Asherah that ate at Jezebel's table or Jezebel's prophets. Amen. Hallelujah. These were the ones that she trained and she imparted in. Okay. So Jezebel, once again, came after Elijah because as a result of the challenge, amen, we find that he convinced the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets uh, of Jezebel uh, that God was the God of truth. First Kings, the 18th chapter, and let's go down to the 39th verse, the 39th verse. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God and the Lord, he is the God. Hear me. And as a result of him being obedient, when all the people saw they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. So he convinced them, amen, that the God, our God, the one that still lives, rests, rules, reigns, and abides in the earth, was the only God. He was the God, the true and living God. Uh, Jezebel had no issues with Elijah up until this point. She had no problems with Elijah up until this point. But because now her prophets are now believing in Elijah's God because he shared or manifested the word of truth unto them. This is when the problem starts. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. So he slew the false prophets. And Elijah say unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Amen. So the prophets were annihilated. The people uh, were convinced of the truth. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. So we find later on down here, um, verse uh, chapter 19, verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with thou how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one one of them by tomorrow about this time. Jezebel heard about it. The fact that before the, the prophets were annihilated, they were able to recognize that God was the word, the God of truth. Okay. Once she realized what had taken place, she sent a threat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what were the results of the threat in Elijah's life? There were several results of the threat of Jezebel in Elijah's life. Now, keep in mind, he was not any average, any day person. This is somebody who knew God, who knew the supernatural provision of God. He operated and manifested um, exploits in the earth realm, okay? He obeyed God. And as a result of obeying God, being divinely positioned and aligned, there were those 
prophets that were convinced of the truth. The woman of God was, uh, the widow woman was convinced of the truth of the word of God. Jezebel, uh -huh, out of her anger, and you know, I would probably be mad too if uh, those that I have poured into, those who were my followers, if they were all slain, not to mention they learned the truth before they were slain. I love that part even the more. Amen. Hallelujah. So she was upset um, and in haste and out of not knowing the totality of who he was and what God had placed on the inside of him, we see here that what? Number one, Elijah ran. He ran. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. He ran. And he even left, he was running so fast, he left his servant there, okay? But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is not enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers, the very man that brought life and ministered life to the widow woman who was ready to give up and give in the towel. Now, as a result of a threat from Jezebel, we see even in his run, how the dwindling down of his ability to discern or to know or walk confidently um, in who he was and what God had placed him on the earth to do, he took off running. Now we find the very same man, amen, that boldly came um, against the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets that sat uh, of Ezra that sat at or were taught by Jezebel because of one threat. He got scared and he ran. He got scared and he ran. He allowed fear to cloud his ability to see who God was. Number one, he ran. Number two, he allowed fear, who God, to cloud his ability to see who God was. Uh, another person who uh, walked in fear and allowed fear to cloud their ability to see who God was or allow fear to creep into their lives is Job. Oftentimes we find people that reference themselves to Job, you know, and I've done it in the past. Amen. When you're going through hit after hit and blow after blow and situation and circumstance and everything that you're going through, we find Job over in um, Job 3 and 25, uh, out of the abundance of his mouth really speaking the root of the problem and why he had to go through what he had to go through. Amen. Beloved, I would propose to you, it's time for you to realize your power and the authority and the validity of your father and the awesomeness and the powerfulness that has now come upon your life as being a child of God. So out of fear, Amen. Hallelujah. Job's fear opened the door for all of these things to happen in his life because his fear was in direct contrast of God and who he was, who he is. He is the great I am. He's the God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for him. He is I am that I am. Are you hearing where I'm coming from? And Job's fear just 
life, that seed or root of fear in Elijah's life opened the door for God allowing this level of attack to come because he was not uh, mindful. Either one of them knew their God in the, uh, in the place of authority that they should have known their God and they did not know their place of authority. So here, out of fear, he ran. I would propose to you that Elijah knew God, but he did not fully comprehend who he was. Elijah didn't know who he was. He didn't know the things that were a part of his benefit package as a result of being a child of God. Romans 8 and 37, very familiar says, nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. More than conquerors. Beloved, there is nothing, no situation and no circumstance that will come against your life that you do not have a blood-bought right to victory over because of God, because you serve God because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I want to annihilate fear out of your eyes today, out of your ears today, out of your hearts today. I want you to understand and understand clearly. I don't care where you find yourself right now. God has already created a way of escape. God has already brand you and stamped you victorious. As children of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We reign victorious, not sometime, not every other time, not every six months, hallelujah, but as king, children of the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the Lord strong and mighty, we win every time. Scripture tells it, for all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You win every time. So he didn't know the fullness of who he was. He didn't know the weight of his value, Romans 8 and 17. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Elijah didn't want to suffer. He wanted to die. This is where we find him over here in the scripture. He said he's just going ahead and just take his life and he is going to die. He didn't fully comprehend the level of authority that God had given him. So instead of standing up and standing against Jezebel, Elijah ran. He ran into the wilderness and the wilderness represents a dry place, a place of hunger, a place of thirst, a, a place of deprivation. Hallelujah. A lonely place. Hallelujah. Come on, prophetic voices. Come on, prophets. Come on, those who are, are, are in leadership and serve as prophetic voices over ministries and churches. It's time to arise in your confidence. It's not time to make uh, to run to the wilderness. It's not time to run away when things come our way and present themselves. That is the perfect time to stand boldly and fat flat-footed and began to decree and declare what thus saith the Lord concerning our lives. So he ran to the wilderness, this place of hunger, thirst, deprivation. Then we find ultimately that he ended up in a cave, a cold, dry and lonely place. It is the spirit's ultimate uh, uh, assignment to number one, cause you to second guess who you are. Amen. I have talked to people who have dealt with a strong Jezebelic spirit. 
that by the time that spirit felt finished with them, they was wondering if they were saved, if they were called, if God could ever use them again as a result of the truth, just releasing the truth. If you are bold enough to release the truth, you are a target. Amen. Hallelujah. But being a target means nothing because my Bible tells me that the, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It might form, but it will not prosper. The only way that it can prosper, if, if we do just like Elijah, we tuck tail and we run. We allow fear to overtake our hearts and our minds and our spirit. We allow fear to rob us of our kingdom positioning. Elijah got out of position. He came from the high place and went to the low place because of opposition, because of one threat. Beloved, I'm telling you, you have to maintain your kingdom confidence according to the word of God if you are releasing and speaking truth. If you are boldly proclaiming what thus saith the Lord, if you have decided that this book right here still is valid, that it is still uh, worthy, that it is still the answer to every situation and every circumstance, expect opposition. Opposition can come as long as you know where the opposition is coming from. Ultimately, we find Elijah in a cave, in a cold and lonely place. Here comes God calling Elijah. Come on up out that cave, boy. Elijah, come on here. Come on here. Him speaking to Elijah. What are you doing there? And he here he's he's uh been so on the run. He's allowed this fear to rob him of even his ability to discern what the voice of God is saying and what he ought to do or how he ought to respond. And out of his flesh, he said he ran. He was on the run because they sought to kill his life. God wasn't even talking about why he was in the cave. He was talking about why he was positioned in the cave. How did he get in the cave? This is what God was asking. He was asking a question that he already had the answer to. But because of Elijah now being positioned where he was, ultimately, God was, I truly believe God's uh, desire was that uh, Elijah slay Jezebel. But because of his fear, his not knowing the fullness of who he was, Yehu was the one that ended up slaying Jezebel. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want to propose to you that is the purpose of this, this spirit to get you off course, to get you off of the course of your purpose, your destiny, to drive a wedge between you and the manifestation of the word and will of God concerning your life. All because you are crazy enough to obey God. You are crazy enough to stand on his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Another example um, of this spirit in operation, amen, is over in the New Testament. Amen. Hallelujah. We find John the Baptist over in the New Testament. Let's go to Matthew, the third chapter. That is Matthew the third chapter. We're talking about people who uh, went through things because of their stance on truth or because of them representing truth in the earth realm. If this is you, you're a target. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew, the third chapter. Oh, God. Matthew 3. 
verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken out by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John the Baptist had his raiment of caramel hair and a, a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So we find John who, uh, who uh, was uh, the forerunner of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He was also used in his mother's womb to witness, amen, that Christ was coming. It says after the salutation uh, out of uh, Mary's voice, okay, the baby within her leaped, amen. I truly believe that that, it, you know, that's that sign that he was the confirmation or the leaping that took place. He witnessed to who Jesus was in his mother's womb. Here we find that he was forerunner, that he compelled me to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Many were saved as a result of his foretelling of the comings of Christ. People were baptized. People were um, convinced of the truth of Christ that was to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were convinced of the truth of God who was to come. Now, um, if, um, verses 7 through 12. But when he saw many of these Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O ye generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Listen, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, and he will burn up the chafe which quenches the fire. Still talking about Jesus and the, the coming of Jesus. Then, G, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized. But John forbade him, saying, I have need, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened, and said unto him, unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descend sending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So he didn't just release righteous, promote and re uh, uh, release truth, amen, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He also baptized many, but specifically, I want you to hear this, he baptized Jesus. He baptized Jesus. But from here, we find that because of John the Baptist walking in truth and releasing truth, he also was a target of the spirit of Jezebel. Amen. Hallelujah. And through here, we find 
Uh, and I'm just going to stop right here. We, we're going on in here. I know that I'm not going to have time to continue, but next week I'm going to continue in sharing with you of how this spirit of Jezebel came against John the Baptist through Herodias, Herod's wife. Amen. Hallelujah. And how later on the same John the Baptist that we're talking about right now, we find him in jail sending a message from his apostle to Jesus's apostle asking, are you the one or shall we look for another? But, oh God, hallelujah. That's enough right there for today. Amen. I want to pray for those of you today who perhaps uh, heard yourself in uh, the teaching today. You are a prophetic voice. You possess a prophetic anointing. Amen. Uh, but you found yourself in this season of, of being attacked or uh, even finding yourself in this season of not fully understanding who you are or what God has placed you on earth to do. You don't know the power that you have on the inside of you. You lack the level of kingdom confidence that is needed in this season and in this hour. Those are the people I want to pray for today. Those who lack the level of kingdom confidence in God, the kingdom confidence in the word of God, uh, have a low self perspective of who you are. Amen. Perhaps because of erroneous teaching, perhaps because, um, You've yet to fully understand the validity of who you are and who God created you to be. I want to pray for y'all today. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you today. We lift you. We magnify you. We glorify you. You are our God and beside you. There is no other. Father, I pray for those who are under the sound of my voice today, who are uh, lacking in their kingdom confidence, in their ability to trust you, to trust your word, to stand on your word and your ability. Their hearts are crying, I believe, but help my unbelief. They have found themselves in situations and circumstances that are now requiring a greater level of kingdom confidence, a greater level of understanding of who they are and the victorious place or stance that you have called them in for such a time as this. King of glory, Lord strong and mighty, Lord mighty in battle, I decree and I declare a coming up and a coming out of that place of weary in well-doing, that place of I believe but help my unbelief. I decree and I declare that they are confidently standing up flat-footed and standing on your word as never before. I release a world overcoming ability that would catapult them into this new place of kingdom reigning that you have called them to for such a a time as this. I prophesy, decree, and declare that doubt, fear, unbelief are things of the past and, and that they are your extraordinary kingdom advances, that they trust in you with all of their hearts. They lean not unto their own understanding, but in all of their ways, they acknowledge you and you direct their path. Father, I thank you today for eyes to see and ears to hear. Hallelujah you confidently and boldly who they are as never before. I decree and I declare that the voices of yesterday, the voices of words spoken over their lives, words spoken over them even through childhood, through processes and seasons of their lives are stripped of the, its power, its glory, and its authority concerning their lives. And they are arising. Hallelujah in kingdom confidence as never before 
in the name of Jesus. Uh, may your peace that supersedes human comprehension guard their hearts, guard their minds, guard their feelings, guard their emotions as never before in, through, and by the very precious name of Yeshua Amashiach. We have prayed and it is so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining um, me today. We will continue next week. Uh, uh, and until Father releases, I truly believe that there's a greater level of understanding that has to come to the lives of, of, of God's people if we are to reign victoriously the way that he has predestined and preordained for us to reign for such a time as this. Amen. Hallelujah. If you like to uh, uh, find out more about uh, TCB Ministries, uh, who I am, what I do, go by tcbministries.org. Amen. Go by tcbministries.org. There you can find out uh, who I am, what I do, all of that good stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, if you'd like to sow a seed today, um, they are appreciated. Amen. You can um, cash app us at dollar symbol TCBMIN. Once again, you can cash app us at dollar symbol TCBMIN. And I will place the, the PayPal information um, in the comments at a later time. But it has truly been a blessing. It has truly been a privilege and an honor to be on with you, to be able to share with you what thus saith the Lord, to um, expose uh, the spirit of Jezebel to bring greater insight and understanding of her devices and what her ultimate plan is. And that is to get you to sit down somewhere to shut up and to hope to die. But over the, I decree and declare over the sound of those, the, uh, the lives of those who are under the sound of my voice today, it will not work and uh, you will not succumb. Hallelujah. Well, I love you. I appreciate you. But most importantly, I celebrate you and the awesomeness and the greatness that's on the inside of you. Bye bye. And you have a great, great day. Hallelujah.